Hello Nexters, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, I'm joined by Robert today uh, and what we're doing today is about codex. Um, and I haven't really planned everything, so I haven't even got a fancy presentation or anything. We're just literally going to do a Whiteboard Wednesday because quite fundamentally, I actually don't know very much about codex, which is a horrible thing to admit. So I'm basically going to ask Robert to explain stuff to us. So uh, let's, uh, let's just start. Right, so Robert, first and foremost, what is a codex? Tell the audience. Oh, tell the audience, okay. Not me. So, so uh, if you have a video, for example, then you have uh, raw pixels that give you, you know, the color for each pixel, uh, 920 by uh, 180. And that's a lot of pixels, and each pixel has to have uh, uh, a color value. And that takes a lot of space. So you need a way to compress them down so that, they, so that they can fit on your computer and you can send it back and forth. And that's basically what a codec is. It's uh, specification or whatever you want to call it that uh, uh, specifies how to compress something and how to decompress it. Okay, so when we talk about how to compress something and decompress it, so that's why it's codec, is code and decode, right? Codec. I haven't thought about that, but it could be. Uh, uh, that's something I, that Robert doesn't know. I, I won't say it's not. Right, can you just write down for me some examples of codecs? Okay, okay, because I get confused sometimes because like we have obviously wrappers and uh, there's so many different elements. So yeah, so the, the most common ones that yes. you've heard about from today is, for example, uh, our fav my favorite, yeah, H two six four. Okay, two six four, and it's also called uh, that's a four. It's not very good at whiteboard. No, <laughs> it's also called AVC. Right, why is it called also AVC? Well, I think that's more of a sales uh, name. Okay. Uh, H264 is a more of a specification. Okay. Name. And is that AVC1? There is no such thing as AVC1 or so. What there is, is you have H265, which okay. is called HEVC. HEVC. And what does HEVC stand for? Uh, high efficiency video codec. Very nice. And AVC is advanced video codec. Okay, and uh, what's the difference between uh, AVC and HEVC, just in case the viewers are confused about that? Well, well, the one is newer than the other. Right. Uh, and it compresses more. More compression. Yeah. Right. So, but usually, you know, with these um, extra uh, newer um, iterations. iterations, thank you, uh, they are more complex. Uh -huh. Uh, and they are heavier to encode and decode. So it's not always obvious that you want the newest one. Okay. Because if speed is of essence, you know, okay, uh, if it's twice as fast but only 20% bigger, then maybe it doesn't matter so much mm -hmm. for, for your use case. So I think uh, usually, especially for high bit rates, H.264 makes sense to use over H.265 because it's more optimized, it's more mature, it's quicker. Uh, it's first at where, where uh, these newer codecs start to shine is either at very low bit rates or very high resolutions. Mm -hmm. So H2, H.264, for example, only goes to 4K okay. in terms of resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, and already at 4K, you can see some, even at high bit rates, some advantages of uh, HEVC. Mm -hmm. But if you have very low bit rates, like one megabit or whatever, then, then it can make sense to use HEVC. Okay. Or if you have, you know, like Netflix, they have to send terabytes of data of the same video, so it's okay for them to spend uh, two days to encode one minute of video. Mm -hmm. I'm exaggerating, but uh, roughly, the, then it makes sense to use this. For, for us broadcasters that want you know quickly get access to our material and send it onwards, etc., H.264 makes uh, more sense, in my opinion. Uh, and um, uh, that's, for example, Sony's X80, the uh, X, uh, what is it called, XAVC? I think so. He's asking the wrong person. XAVC, I, I don't remember exactly <laughs> what it is. But uh, basically, there, um, there is XDCAM. And this is the next iteration of XD Cam. Mm -hmm. uh, XD Cam uses H.262. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we've gone uh, one step up. H.262 was optimized for SD. H.264 is optimized for HD. Uh, so that works a lot better. And would you say that um, H.265 is optimized for uh, like 8K, for instance? Yeah, would for that example. Be a reasonable uh, now, now we also have something called um, H.266. What? I've never heard uh, of that. <laughs> uh, that's quite new. Uh, I don't actually even remember what its uh, uh, you know, public acronym, is. acronym is or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then there's a lot of other new ones on the field like AV1, which mm -hmm. is an open source 
codec. Okay. So uh, H.265 and H.266 are licensed, uh -huh. so you need to have a license to use them. Mm -hmm. H.264, uh, I think all the patents are running out now, so you don't need a license anymore. Mm -hmm. 81 is open source. So it's not as good as H.266, but you don't need to pay for it. Right, so and AV1, who's developing that? Uh, it's some kind of uh, open source foundation. I think it's with Cisco and Mozilla and okay. uh, those uh, oh, Mozilla. Interesting. browsers like to use this. Yes, it's a browser thing. Yeah, so that's good. So, okay, uh, um, there is another thing that I want to ask you about uh, that um, I hear quite a lot, mm. that, that people say, you know, long gop. And what, what is that? Yeah, so then actually uh, these uh, codecs are what we call interframe codecs. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, a video is a number of frames, right? Yeah. Don't forget to look at the audience, otherwise you're leaving them out. Right? Yeah, well, I'm all <laughs> going out of frame now, so... Yeah, you need to stand on your X. Yeah, I have my X here. So, usually when you have a video, yeah. there is a lot of similarities between frames after each other. Mm -hmm. For example, when looking at this video, the screen has been looking pretty much the same over one second. Mm -hmm. So you kind of don't want to have to recode it, you can just... You know, uh, tell that, uh, okay, this frame looks exactly the same in this area, so you don't need to encode that. And that's an interframe mm -hmm. compression. So basically, you can reuse uh, compression from previous frames. So that's an iframe, right? An interframe. Would that be correct? Uh, no, to no, no. So, God uh, damn it, I know so nothing. The way this works. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could do that. That's nice. So when you get a new frame, you get yep. an iframe. An iframe is basically uh, an interframe. Uh, inter yeah. So then you encode the whole frame as right. is. No dependencies with anything else. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you can have predictive frames, mm -hmm. which basically only encode the differences from the uh, intraframe it's okay. pointing to. And what would that be called? Uh, that, uh, this can be a B frame, for example. A B frame. A B frame or a P frame. So you can feature. predict both in, in forwards and backwards. Oh, okay, all right. So, so you, you can also point to, you know, you have an iframe here and then you're pointing to that one as well. So the closer together you have the iframes, the bigger the file, yeah. but the better the quality? Would that be right? Uh, no, actually, it doesn't have so much to do with quality. Uh, it's more if you have very long distances, because when you're seeking in the file, mm -hmm. you need to find uh, iframe, iframe first. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find that iframe, and if it's... Uh, uh, the B frames also, you have to find the next one yep. and then decode to the frame you want to find. So whenever you're seeking on a file, it has to go through all of these. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if you have 10 minutes between I frames, then it can take very long time yeah. to seek in the file. And sometimes you see that when you're scrubbing on like a web video, it goes all kind of gray color with this weird uh, sort of... It depends on the codec, but, yeah. but basically, you know, when you seek somewhere and there's a long delay before you see something, yeah. uh, that means you have a very long... So gop. it's going back to try and find the eye flame. Uh, that's the long gop. Yeah. Right, yes. okay. Yes. What does gop stand for? Is it... A uh, group of pictures. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, so I like that, group of pictures, uh, right. I thought it was something really technical, but... Yeah. Group of pictures, right. So uh, long group of pictures is when you have a big distance between the iframe and the next iframe. Yeah. Right. Basically. Okay. Simplified that way. Awesome. So, I've learned so, something. So, the, uh, you know, the longer gop you have, the better you can compress it. Yeah. But, but also oh, it takes longer to seek. Okay. And the, you know, return on investment, so to say, is, is a logarithmic curve, right? Uh, now he's going. So, you know, uh, the difference between having one and ten you know, the compression efficiency between having a yeah, gop of one. They can't see your whiteboard if you stand okay, in front yeah. of it. Uh, between one and 10 is huge. Yeah. But between 10 and 20, it's much smaller. Right. Right? Because mm -hmm. it's the percentage of iframes that you have. Okay. Right? So usually, you know, uh, even when you're really, really, you know, compressing, you don't have a gop of bigger than 250. And oftentimes, smart codecs uh, can uh, dynamically insert the, uh, the inter interframe. Okay. Frame. So, you know, if you have a scene change, mm -hmm. so if you were looking here and you cut to a different camera, then there's no point in reusing any data from our, uh, this camera we're at currently. And then the codec can insert an iframe there directly mm -hmm. and then continue over. Because the data before is completely irrelevant yeah, once you do exactly. the cut, right? So, yeah. so then often you have this uh, scene change threshold parameter. Uh, and we actually use that in next edition when we try to fig automatically figure out a good thumbnail, mm -hmm. we're actually trying to find the first cut mm. scene change in a video, and we use that as our thumbnail. Yeah, because the first picture is usually not the one we want. Yeah, for example, uh, 
uh, many uh, some films start with the intro or the trailer or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't want that. You want the first frame after the intro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then usually, that's you know, uh, without using advanced AI, that's you know one way. He's, to he's it. looking smug because he's worked <laughs> something out. All right, so, now. Um, but but going back to that. Sorry, we're going back. Yes. Yeah. So so the intro and interframe. Yeah. There are other codecs. These are more distribution codecs mm -hmm. usually that you know you send to the end clients or streaming. Then there's codecs for editing. And okay. those, those are the ones, you know, like yeah, ProRes. Okay, um, all right. So there is, there's a fundamental DS, difference. XHD. Uh, MXF? Uh, MXF is a container. We ah, you see, that. I knew I was going to make a container error. Yeah, and then there's also AVC Intra. Yes. AVC so, Intra, yes. Yeah, and, and there are Intra formats in all of these. So basically, they just remove all the GOP stuff okay. and use the, the com Inter. So if, uh, I, if I draw a line there. And we said, okay, so th when these lose the group of pictures, yes. So they are literally frame accurate. It's literally a whole frame, or are they compressing each? Are they they're compressing each frame separately. Okay. So there is no interdependencies between them. And and the upside of this is that when you're seeking, you only have to decode one frame. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so for editing, this is usually better. Yeah. Uh, in theory. Mm -hmm. In practice, you know, in my opinion. Uh, is it's kind of a waste. Mm -hmm. May, maybe still in 8K, it makes sense to have uh, these intra formats. But if you have an a, a inter codec and have just a short long gop, for example, XD Cam makes a good choice of having 12. Mm -hmm. So every 12th frame, they have an inter frame. Okay. That means when you're seeking, worst case, you have to decode 11 frames. Yes. Okay. And with modern computers and HD formats, uh, you're talking about, you know, sub-second yeah. to, to do that. So it's not so relevant. So uh, then the question is, I guess these were developed in another time when, you know, that was a necessary thing to do. And what you're saying is that now that, that we've got faster processors and faster GPUs, that we don't necessarily need to, to use these formats no. All the time. No, not necessarily. There, of course, are cases where it makes sense, but yeah. no, uh, not necessarily. But that's an interesting evolution of uh, of the codec world, right? Yeah. Well, you know, but but we still, you know, we keep increasing the resolution. Yeah. So the relevance is still there. Exactly. So when we're at sixteen k, it was going to need yeah. to use. <laughs> so uh, it, it depends on you know will disk uh, SSD drives keep up mm -hmm. or the CPUs keep up and the GPUs and the technology etc. So um. Also, you know, let's talk a little bit about cloud kind of stuff because that's very relevant as well. Uh, how does this all work in the cloud? You know, because there are cloud formats. You know, like uh, Zixi, for instance, they they're running uh, uh, on the edge, so they're running an edge server converting to a uh, a lower rate and pushing it up. I'm not quite sure 100% how that works. And also, um, there's a CDI, which is uh, uncompressed video in the cloud that um, is uh, developed by Amazon. How would that? I mean, how does that all work? I'm not asking you a crazy question, I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there, there is another, uh, especially when you're talking about cloud and streaming, etc., is latency. Mm -hmm. That's a huge issue. And all of these, you know, bigger codecs, uh, they introduce uh, latency. Yeah. Especially if you have a long gop, you need uh, with by backwards prediction, then you have to get all the frames yeah. before. Right. Uh, and there are calls things to reduce, like the intra refresh. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can actually receive very low latency on these codecs as well. But um, yeah, in, in the cloud, you have to sort out the latency, the overhead. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would guess in Amazon's case, the uh, the network bandwidth internally mm -hmm. is not so relevant for yeah. them. Yeah. But when you go out from the cloud, then you get a little. Yeah. So you could move it around in the cloud yeah. uncompressed without any problems, yeah. obviously. But then it's, it's how does it come out and yeah. get in as well at the same yeah. time. Cool. Is there anything else? I, I can't think of any more questions. Is there anything else you can think of that, about so, codecs that I'm missing here? So, I mean, of course, there's audio codecs as well. Um, Usually not as interesting because audio is not as big. Unless you're interested in audio, and then yeah, they're very yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But, but relative to video, it's usually quite small. Yes. Right. Even uncompressed. Mm -hmm. So like XDCAM, I think they have a PCM 24, so that's 24-bit audio uncompressed, a mm -hmm. standard. Uh, there are, of course, audio codecs as well, AAC and Opus and all of these. Yeah. That can be interesting, but um, they are not as interesting as the video because the relative sizes are, are different. Are quite and, different. And what about the future? I mean, we talked a bit there about H.266 and the AV1 stuff. I mean, how do you see, you know, like in five years, do you think we, we'll have like a common codec or do you think everything will be completely different? What, what, what do you think? I mean, we have competition and competition is good, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, funded codecs and we have open source codecs. And uh, I think that's a good thing. 
Yeah. So we'll see. I think we're going to have an H.267 also in the future. Uh, I think there's going to be more focus on HDR and higher frame rates than resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really see a way beyond 8K at the moment, but uh, I'm sure somebody has said it about that about yeah. HD as well at some point. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, so, and, and for right now, a lot of the focus is on you know making things as compressed as possible, mm -hmm. and maintaining quality for these big streamers like Netflix, etc., and web browsers and YouTube. Um, but is there is there a fundamental interest in someone like uh, the the big streamers using something like AV1 because there's no license involved in that and the, yeah yeah of that that's the that, that, that driving force that, that behind can it. Be, uh, I think that's the primary motivator. So could this become a bit like the VHS beta cam wars, where you know <laughs> one will prevail over all the others? We'll, we'll have to see. Usually the lower quality one prevails. Yeah. Uh, I do believe like YouTube only offered uh, 4K video in AV1 for a while, or was it VP9? I'm not sure. Okay. So only with that codec. Uh, now, uh, there is now that you know, web technologies is becoming more uh, prevalent. Uh, we have the need of you know, FaceTime calls or Google Hangout, etc. Mm -hmm. And codecs more optimized for real-time usage. Yeah. Now, this is WebRTC land. Yeah, mm, for example. So Google has uh, this VP9 codec that they are using. Yeah. That actually has a, a mode where it, it you know, optimizes quality to achieve real-time. So if you have a better uh, computer, it will you know, compress more. If you have a slower computer, it will compress less, just in order to uh, get the right... Uh, yeah, so, uh, so what it's doing is it, it's prioritizing latency over quality, right? So it's saying, it's saying I want to get the picture there. Yeah, it, it wants to do it in real time, yeah. right? So you, you can have, when you're encoding, you can give parameters, like I want a constant bit rate, mm -hmm. right? I want it to meet, meet 10 megabits, or I want a constant quality. In uh, LibX264, that's called the uh, constant rate factor. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it tries to maintain the quality. Or you can have, I want to have a constant speed. You know, I want to have 25 frames per second, real time, uh, and, you know, up, compress as much as you can within that time frame. So you can have different compression. But then if you can, you can use a different codec over WebRTC. So you would be able to, say, take something like, you know, um, like ProRes and send that over WebRTC. If you had the bandwidth. Yeah, in theory, you could do in that. In theory, you could do that. Yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure how, how strict the specification is, per se. But technically, yes, you could do that. I like to get him out of his yeah. comfort zone. Now, 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 other interesting things you were talking about the future is actually AI-based codecs. Ooh, fancy. Uh, so I know NVIDIA has created a codec uh, uh, research, of course. Uh -huh. But they have a codec that compresses, I think, 100 times better than in all of these when it comes to faces. OK. So basically what they do, they use a regular codec and compress the face a lot, mm -hmm. like it's not usable picture. And then they feed that to an AI that's running locally on you that has been trained on improving the quality and re reconstructing faces. And that way they can have a codec that is extremely efficient just for that specific use case, where they have the AI kind of filling in the blanks in a very good way. This is very scary. <laughs> it's like Terminator. So I, That's I, interesting. I, I think if, if we're talking about the future of Codex, uh, I believe AI might be uh, something that uh, might be more and more prevalent, mm -hmm. uh, where, where you basically tra you, you compress it more yeah. with the traditional Codex and then have the AI Look for help, the patterns and yeah, help you, yeah. uh, you know, get back the quality. Yeah. A lot of computer games are using this today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, NVIDIA has this DLSLR or something where they have trained the AI for a specific game. Mm -hmm. So basically they run the game in 8K mm -hmm. and then train the AI with that. And then when it comes to the user's computer, they run it in HD and then use the AI to scale it up to 8K. Ah. So basically they've compressed the 8K uh, video, yeah. but you still get the quality as, um, well, it's not as if, but you know. Very close. Closer to 8K than otherwise, mm -hmm. very cheaply. Yeah. And I think we might see more and more of that, where you have a compressed AI model for you know, specific types of video. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can use that a you can compress the video more while still maintaining the play out quality. Interesting, interesting. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah, we'll stop there because otherwise we're getting <laughs> into things that I'm too old to understand. <laughs> thank All you right. everybody for watching. Thank you, Robert, for your insight as always. It's a very knowledgeable man.
I don't know how, how he keeps his brain in there. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you need to subscribe because I've seen that 60% of you are not subscribing, but you're still coming back. Yeah, where's so, uh, the button? It's here. Right? Yeah, I don't know. It's there somewhere yeah, like that. And if you're watching on LinkedIn, you can follow uh, Next Edition's page or you can follow me or Robert, in fact, because we're mm -hmm. both on there. So thanks for watching and uh, we hope to see you next week for another Whiteboard Wednesday. Have a good week.